Both China and the U.S. are setting their sights on the moon once again. China plans to construct a human outpost, the International Lunar Research Station, by 2035. Similarly, the USA has launched the Artemis program, aiming to return humans to the moon in roughly the same time frame. And both countries are targeting the water-rich Lunar South Pole for their first human outposts. However, there are only about nine regions suitable for human habitation in there. This scarcity means that the Lunar South Pole could indeed become either a collaborative home or a new battleground for Earth's most powerful nations within the next decade. But haven't we heard about moon bases and space politics for decades? So what's really changed? There are two main changes driving this renewed interest. First, reusable rockets have made spaceflight much cheaper and more reliable since the last time humans set foot on the moon. Data shows that from the 1960s to 2022, the cost of placing one kilogram into orbit has dropped significantly from 55,000 US dollars with a space shuttle to only 1,500 with SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. This cost reduction has led to substantially more objects being launched into space each year and more spacefaring countries. Moreover, space logistics is reaching a point where launching heavier payloads farther into space is increasingly feasible. NASA itself is one such example, eyeing habitation of the moon in preparation of settling humans on Mars. The second and perhaps more groundbreaking development is the confirmation of valuable resources, especially water, on the moon. The lunar surface holds considerable amounts of titanium, iron, and rare earth deposits. These materials could revolutionize space manufacturing, allowing for the production of spare parts and assemblies in microgravity. But the real game changer, the presence of water on the moon. Recent estimates suggest the moon might hold about 600 billion kilograms of water ice on its surface, roughly equivalent to the annual water consumption of 20 million American families. This can support human life as drinking water or for agriculture. But more importantly, this ice can be broken down into oxygen and hydrogen for use as rocket fuel. Launching rockets from the moon requires significantly less fuel compared to Earth allowing rockets to carry more payload and travel farther distances. This is critical in maintaining the lines of communication between Earth and the Moon. And equally critical is maintaining the information flow. In the same way nations need to secure their communications to their Moon bases by choosing the best position on the Moon's South Pole, you can secure your digital base by choosing a handy VPN, like CyberGhost. With over 38 million users worldwide, and possibly soon on the moon, this is one of the most recommended VPN providers on the market. Just by turning it on, CyberGhost VPN will encrypt and reroute 100% of your traffic through their secure servers in over 100 countries. By changing your digital location on the CyberGhost app, you can also unblock libraries of over 40 streaming platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and many more. The app is also available for all operating systems and can protect up to seven devices at the same time. That's a lot of devices, so you can always share your subscription with friends and family. So get started with CyberGhost VPN today. Protect your data and get access to blocked content on the internet for only $2.03 a month. Totally risk-free, so check it out. Link in the description. However, the water isn't evenly distributed across the lunar surface. It's primarily found at the poles. Due to the moon's orbit, the pole's horizon receives sunlight from a very shallow angle. As a result, the highest peaks and rims are illuminated for 80% to 90% of the year, earning them the name Peaks of Eternal Light. Conversely, the depths of the craters and caverns have been in shadow for billions of years. NASA calls these shadowed caverns and craters PSR, or Permanently Shadowed Regions. 
These shadowed areas are thought to be among the coldest places in the entire solar system, reaching temperatures as low as negative 238 degrees Celsius, colder than Pluto's surface. Such extreme cold makes scientists confident about the abundance of not only ice water, but also other frozen gases like methane. Specifically, the South Pole's unique geography leads scientists to believe it holds more water than other lunar regions. For this reason, both NASA and CNSA, China's space agency, have targeted this region for their first outposts as it allows a almost constant energy supply and temperature compared to other lunar regions. Although PSRs are spread over an area about the size of Belgium, there are only a handful of suitable, habitable sites, as these must guarantee exceptionally long periods of sunlight while being close to the ice reserves. NASA, for example, has identified nine landing candidates suitable for human habitats around Shackleton Crater that both have access to almost constant energy generation, direct line of sight to the Earth, and are close to water and mineral deposits. China, too, has targeted these same landing spots and is planning to land its Chang'e 7 mission in 2026 on one of NASA's landing site candidates on the Shackleton Rim. Both the Artemis program and the ILRS program state their intention to leverage lunar resources for space exploration and research. As we've seen, these resources are essential for space exploration, but are limited to specific regions. If China lands on NASA's candidate landing sites, it reduces NASA's available options, and vice versa if NASA lands on Chinese landing candidate regions. This creates a first-come advantage, which can determine the success probability of a lunar outpost. This scarcity of prime locations is why conflicts over controlling the best areas could become a reality. A major issue between the U.S. and Chinese bases is the lack of confidence-building measures. For instance, since 2011, the Wolf Amendment has prohibited NASA from cooperating with Chinese state or commercial entities. This means that even if there are superficial communications, neither country truly knows what research the other will conduct on the moon, where they'll search for resources, what kind of resources they'll seek, and how they'll use those. This lack of transparency leads to mistrust. Although the Outer Space Treaty prohibits the appropriation of resources and the militarization of space, there is no enforcement mechanism, leaving interpretation up to individual countries. The U.S., for instance, adopted a space law during the Obama administration that allows for the extraction and exploitation of space resources, even by commercial companies. Furthermore, the 2020 U.S.-led Artemis Accords, signed by 45 countries at the time of writing, establishes that while countries don't own the mined resources, they can mine resources on the moon. The Accords also allow for the creation of safety zones, defined as areas where another nation's activities could reasonably cause harmful interference. Within these zones, a country can protect public and private personnel, equipment, and operations from harmful interference. Although these zones are conceived as temporary, their duration, scope, and size are at the discretion of the country establishing them. And the means of protecting these safe zones seems to be open to interpretation. For example, Section 11, Article 11, seems to indicate that a country setting up its safe zone can do it in a manner that encourages scientific discovery and technological demonstration, as well as the safe and efficient extraction and utilization of space resources. How is the safe and efficient extraction and utilization of space resources going to be interpreted? China's Space Force planners could interpret these safety zones as creating potential limits and boundaries where Chinese activities could be interfered with. Importantly, since no other countries currently have a human presence or territorial claims on the moon, it's a first-come, first-served situation. 
from the Chinese perspective, it's not just the USA, but all countries adhering to the Artemis Accords that pose a concern. What if other countries occupy valuable lunar real estate, like landing sites and ice deposits? What if other Artemis signatories set up safety zones on China's communication lines to its projected next base on the moon's far side equator or interfere with China's or Artemis's orbiting lunar hubs? European countries, but also Canada, Japan, and Australia, are not only signatories of the Artemis Accords, but are in military alliance with the United States. But what if we flip the scenario, and it was China, not the US, who had pressed for the creation of safety zones? How would the US and its allies have reacted? It's clear that these safety zones give a big advantage to those who first settle on the moon, giving them an edge over the choice of the most suitable habitation regions and the resource deposits. This also means that both countries will try to get to the moon before the other. The transition from safety zones to exclusion zones, and then borders, is really minimal. Similarly minimal is the justification to militarize these. I have to protect my operations on the moon can very quickly become a justification for bringing weapons to the moon outpost, for protecting peace, of course. Although the Outer Space Treaty prohibits the use of space for military activities, countries have been circumventing and gradually eroding this prohibition for decades. It begins with the interpretation of military. For instance, regarding the 1959 Antarctic Treaty, the U.S. interprets military as non-aggressive, whereas Russia defined non-military as peaceful. These interpretations extend to space. Both NASA and CNSA are involved in military programs. More than half of NASA's astronauts are active duty military personnel, while China's Taikonauts are all active members of China's Space Force equivalent. Space is already militarized. Military satellites monitor Earth. Space planes can interfere with satellites in orbit. Countries have been destroying satellites with rockets for decades and tested nuclear weapons in the atmosphere. And most of Earth's powers have their own space forces, with the US Space Force created in 2019. So, what can prevent countries from building up military capabilities in space and on the moon? It appears that the Outer Space Treaty, the main internationally recognized treaty on space, signed by China, Russia, and the US, is outdated. When the treaty was signed in the 1960s, outer space just wasn't as accessible as it is now, and it was a capability limited to a few countries. Now, not only countries, but even private companies can send rovers to the moon, and space resource exploitation is becoming increasingly feasible. What is even more important is that lunar habitation will establish the technologies and guidelines used in the exploration of Mars. In March 2023, NASA has created the Moon to Mars office in Washington. The office will gather the experience of moon habitation and transfer it to the exploration of the red planet in the coming decades. This might also receive an acceleration on U.S. moon and Mars habitation programs due to the new U.S. administration ties with SpaceX, which is currently developing lunar habitation modules and is working on bringing humans to Mars. Space flight accessibility and the evidence of abundant resources that enable space exploration feasibility are sparking a race to land human outposts on the moon. This race needs updated guidelines shared by the main stakeholders and countries involved. The scarcity of resources and suitable real estate on the moon create the risk of enabling conflicts and the constitution of borders on Earth's satellite. If you like this video, please consider joining our Discord community, where we have various events planned, and if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a Patreon member. Get started with CyberGhost VPN today. Protect your data and get access to blocked content on the internet totally risk-free. So, check it out. Link in the description. Thank you for your support.
Ciao.